Aku. Aku apa? Ya ini ya. Oke, meda asik. So, let's try it once more. Aku apa? Meda asik. I think we all didn't say. Aku apa? Meda asik. That is great. So that will be our small test. I'll keep on asking till we finish the talk. Is that okay? My name is Musa Yakubu. I'm your site guide. My local name is Nana Kusi Edu. That is, I was born on a Sunday, named after a king. The king too was born on Sunday. The king's name is um, Nana Kusi Edu. And that is the name that I was named after by my father. Welcome to the residence of Dr. Du Bois. I'm going to be with you from now to 30 to 40 minutes, depending on the questions and the interactions we have together. Please, if you have any questions pertaining to the talk, both internal and then external questions, feel free to relax. If it is of my knowledge, I'm going to give you the answers. I speak a little bit fast, so if you didn't hear what I was saying, you can prompt me and I'll go back for you. Is that okay with you as well? Yeah. That is great. Welcome to the house of Dr. Du Bois. This is the residence of Dr. Du Bois. This is where the boy stayed for the two years that he came to Spain in Ghana. He was born on February 23, 1868, in great parenting in Massachusetts. Raised by a mother called Mary, whom with research said she came from West Africa, and her father, Alfred Du Bois, from a French background. Du Bois lived his whole life to the age of 93 years before he came to spend the rest of his life in Ghana. That is the two years remaining. He died at the age of 95, born on February 23, 1868, and he died on 27th August 1963 at the age of 95 years. Du Bois is a sociologist, he is a historian, a politician, a civil rights activist, a man of freedom who was fighting for the rights of blacks in America, a prolific writer and the father of Pan-Africanism. He's also the first black to graduate from Harvard and then one of the co-founders of the NAACP. That is the gown that the boys wore when he graduated from Harvard in the year 1896 and he was in history and government. His dissertation that he wrote is over here. That is Du Bois' dissertation that he wrote when he completed Harvard. Du Bois was invited by the first president of Ghana, Dr. Osadefo Kwame Nkrumah, to edit an Encyclopedia Africana Dictionary of African Biography, and that is the book that I'm talking about. The book to tell who Africans are, what they have, and then what they can use their resources for, and also come together, fight for their right, their freedom, and their country. Du Bois was invited in the year 1960. That was Ghana's first republic. The year 1959, Ghanaians attained their freedom. Nkrumah and Du Bois were very good friends. They met in the Fifth Pan African meeting held in Manchester. That is when Nkrumah and Du Bois became so close. So Nkrumah from Deda came to fight for the freedom of Ghanaians. The year Ghanaians attained their freedom, he wrote a letter inviting his very good friends to come for this occasion. Du Bois at that time, his passport has been confiscated by the immigration. He was denied travel for seven good years, all in the name of fighting for equality for blacks. He believed in the Soviet Union and the Communist Party. He denied his communist citizenship, being a communist. So he was denied travel. After being trialed in the year 1958, he was granted bail. In the year 1959, he began a war travel. He went to Russia, came to China, he celebrated his 91st birthday in China. The Chinese president, Mao, at that time was a very good friend to the boys. So when the boys found himself in China in the year 1959, celebrating his 91st birthday, he received four gifts from the Chinese government. That is one of the gifts that he received. The scrolls on the wall is another gift that he received. The embroidery we see over here is the third gift. The fourth one is that the boy's birthday was celebrated in China as a public holiday. So imagine you've been born in your country and then your birthday is celebrated in another country as a public holiday. It shows your integrity, your dignity. 
From there, he came to Ghana in the year 1960, when Nkrumah was moving from the prime minister position to the president position. Because when Ghanaians attained their freedom, Nkrumah was a prime minister, accounting to the monarch president, Queen Elizabeth. So Ghana became first republic in the year 1960. He invited the boys to come for that occasion. He told the boys that he has a lot of um, plans to discuss with the boys, but he's not going to put that on the paper. He's going to give them the full details when he came here in person. When the boys came to Ghana, Nkrumah told the boys that it was his ideology to unite Africa. Because he said on the independence day of Ghana that the independence of Ghana is meaningless until it is linked up with the total liberation and unification of Africa. So African countries that were fighting for freedom at that time, Nkrumah said that when they finish and they don't come back together as one force for good, the independence that they are fighting for will be meaningless because no single African state will be powerful and strong enough to stand on its own. So his dream was to unite Africa. So he was helping other African countries to also come out of colonialism. And then he said he does not know what tomorrow holds. And then before information can serve into the people with the people's understanding from what they have read from books. So he wanted to write this encyclopedia for the whole African state to use it as a key to unify Africa. And the best person to write a book for him was Du Bois. Du Bois was full of tears in his eyes because it was his dream to fight for equality for blacks. And then Nkrumah was going to make it come true because he had already written an encyclopedia for the Negroes. So writing an encyclopedia for the rest of the 54 African countries was going to make Nkrumah's dream come true. So Du Bois' dream of fighting for equality for blacks come true. But he told him that he wanted to stay in the U.S., but Nkrumah managed to convince him to come and stay here. So the boys came here the following year, in the year 1961. So when he came here, this house was already built and given to him by Kwame Nkrumah, the first president of Ghana. In the year 1963, the boys celebrated his 95th birthday, February 23rd. He was honored by the University of Ghana. That is the Ghana that he wore. The hoods inside are the various schools that he taught. The embroidery we see over here from the Chinese perspective and it's talking about longevity. That is Du Bois said on it, the staff describing Du Bois' leadership, the deal by his peace, the series his charity and the school his wisdom. So old Du Bois leading his people in peace, full of charity, full of wisdom. Any questions? Any questions? Please ask me questions. <laughs> if you don't ask me questions, I'm going to ask you questions. <laughs> yes. So we are now in Du Bois' bedroom. This is where Du Bois slept and he couldn't wake up again on 27th August 1963, a day before the March <coughs> in Washington by Martin Luther King Jr. Mm. They wanted to go for the March on. But their passport had expired. Mrs. Shelley went to the embassy to renew their, their passport. That is when they find out that when they left the U.S., they denied them of their citizenship. Mm. So she spoke to Mrs. Um, Dr. Dr. Pam Nkrumah, the first president, and Nkrumah gave them the citizenship of Ghana. <coughs> so the march on, the boy was in this house waiting to see his dream that he has been fighting for. And the night before the march on, the boy passed away. So we attributed his legacy to that of Moses, able to lead the people to the promised land, but he himself couldn't see the promised land. Mm -hmm. A question. Um, the encyclopedia that Kwame Nkrumah was developing, can we purchase it? Can we see it? Can no. we... This is the encyclopedia. This is the books. This is the only one you can get at the moment. They, they, don't, they, they don't have them in manufacturing? I mean, no, production. we didn't get no, it. Did no. Only those three exist? Yes. Right. They, we no, have it in the we... National Archive, but that one does not allow you to get access to it. So the only one you can get access to is this one. That no copies? One. No copies. Mm. Yeah. That's important. They should yes. be copies. 
So they should be okay with it? Yes, they should be copy it that people can read it. Experience. Yes. But um, I always say that um, the ideology behind this book was over Trump. The power of this book collapsed when he was overthrown. Dr. Pam and Puma was overthrown in the year 1966. He was the founder of this book. Mm. And this book is describing each country, mm. their resources, mm -hmm. their culture, their customs and everything in this book, geographically. So this book is giving the whole details Mm -hmm. about a country and the people in it. Mm -hmm. So if Nkoma had completed this, it was going to bring the African countries together as one. Mm -hmm. But um, they find out that if they don't overthrow Nkoma, it is going to be <coughs> something great tax mm -hmm. that they will be fighting against. Because when the whole African countries come together, whoever is tapping in the resources of Africa will find it difficult. Mm. Exactly. For that matter, Nkrumah has to be overthrown. So when Nkrumah was overthrown, the founding of this book ceased. So they couldn't complete the rest of the volumes. It is only eight countries compiled in this book. Oh, okay. Yes, so the first country was about Ethiopia and Ghana. Mm -hmm. The second one was Sierra Leone and Zael. Zael is now the Democratic Republic of Congo. Zahel. Yes. Mm -hmm. The third one is South Africa, Botswana, Lesotho, and Swaziland. So whoever stands to fight for the freedom of Africans, they are being brought down. Why should it be so? The world know for the fact that the world lies on the back of Africans. Mm. Mm -hmm. Both the human and the natural resources is in Africa here. Gold, diamond, bauxite, petroleum, magnesium, all what you can talk of, you can find some in Africa. All natural resources. When it comes to the human mentality too, the human resources too, it is with Africans. It is a black man that created traffic light that is used in the whole world. It is a black man that created uh, oxygen that is used in a various hospital. Mm -hmm. It is a black man that changed sugar from the liquid state to the solid state. Mm -hmm. Transplanting was first done by a black man. Mm -hmm. So they know for the fact that the world cannot do away without Africans. <clears throat> so for that matter, the histories of the Africans are being written by other people. So if your histories are being written by other people, the possibility that lives will be transferred in this history is high. But if the history is written by the people themselves, that means that they are going to provide the accurate information. They said if you want to hide something from a black man. <laughs> and I always say that all these great leaders were telling them, the world, that if you want to hide something from a black man, they are saying put it in a book, but they are putting it in a different way that we are not seeing. Mm -hmm. Why am I saying they are putting it in a different way that we are not seeing? They are putting it in a practical form. They build schools for us, take us to the practical form room, then they give you the tools to bring out the best in you. Now, as you are bringing the best out in you, it is now being taken away, transferred, branded, made it, they are thinking that they are the inventions of them. Mm -hmm. But I always say that truth can never be hidden. Even if they dip deep down the earth and hide the truth over there, someday there will be a construction, that truth will be built. Even if they put it in the middle of the sea, someday there will be a crude oil that will be found in that sea, and that truth will be revealed. So one day, Africans are going to come back together as one force for good. And when that time comes, the world is going to lie on Africans for the validity. So whoever is tapping in the resources of Africa should get ready for Africans. Because the time is coming that they have to come and beg for the resources. Mm -hmm. If we don't do that, the next generation that are coming, they will be the ones to suffer for those consequences. And no human being over here, born by a woman, will be happy to see his children or his grandchildren to suffer for those consequences. Mm -hmm. So it is about time that we need to seek the information for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't need to sit down for who to be told. Yeah. We have to move to the grounds and then identify the histories by our own self. That is when we are going to get the accurate information. But if the information are being told to you by some people, they are not going to give you the full information. But if you make your own investigation, that is when you are going to get the whole information. There are times they posted pictures of Africans with a child with big belly with flies around. But you move to the place and then you find out that it is otherwise. 
That is what we have to find out that in each world or in each part of the world that we are, they have different way of living over there. So if you are being told that this place is better than this place, you have to move there and then find out for your own self that what they are saying is it true or false. Any questions? Yeah. If I'm to speak more, I'm going to go far. Yeah. You said there are eight volumes, or there should have been eight volumes. Uh, it should have been 20 volumes, 20 volumes, speaking about all the 54 African countries. Okay, so let me ask a question then. Was there a blueprint that he used to start writing them? And if so, where is that blueprint? Did he leave a blueprint? An outline yeah. showing the progression of what he was going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so when the boys passed away, the wife, Mrs. Shelley, left the country in the year 1966 because Nkrumah was overthrown and Mrs. Shelley was under house arrest over here. Mm. She was appointed by the president Nkrumah to be the director of Ghana Broadcasting Corporation and also a personal advisor to the president. So when Nkrumah was overthrown, they thought they could have gotten certain information from her. So she forced herself to move out of this place. When she left, the place was broken up. So a lot of things were taken away. Mm. Yes. If that is why even there is no <coughs> um, Du Bois, any bed signifying Du Bois sleeping on such or such a bed in here. Mm -hmm. Yes. A lot of things were taken out. But um, we'll move to his library and then we'll see the books that Du Bois was using. Apparently, most of the information because Du Bois was old. So he had people that were making the researches mm -hmm. and then they were bringing those research to him. And then he was scrutinizing the information that we were bringing, piling up to bring this inside. Mm -hmm. How large are the volumes? How many pages is it? How many words, you know? Um, that one, I don't have full knowledge about it. Okay. Big. I know these <laughs> pictures are not labeled. Can you give us any information on them? Yes. That is um, when he was being honored by the University of Ghana on his 95th birthday. Yeah. And this is uh, Stokely Carmichael with Kwame Nkrumah and Mrs. Shelley Graham. This is the boys himself when he was at the age of four years. He looked pretty like a girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that is his arrival to the country in the year 1961 to come and stay officially in mm -hmm. Canada. And that is the wife, Mrs. Shelley, in the Kentucky with Kwame Nkrumah on the side of it. This is the last birthday that was celebrated in this house. After um, being honored by the University of Ghana, they came here to have a birthday celebration. That is also a picture they took from the birthday. And this is um, some ambassadors of Ghana to other countries that they took picture with. And this is the boys when he was in China. He's very outside. He will move there. That will be the last part of the tour. Is this Kwame Ture? Yes, that is Kwame Ture. That is Kwame Nkrumah, the first president oh, okay. and position. Got it. Thank you. Great, excellent, brother. Appreciate it. Excellent. You're welcome. So, family, that is a great introduction, and we're going to proceed to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this was his best. Give you more of that is Kwame's closet. Most women's dream to have a walk in closet. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 We have Du Bois sinking tap in here. You can enter there and you have a look at Du Bois sinking tap. It's jacuzzi. Mm -hmm. I have a contract with all of you in that room. When you get to the age of 95 years, I'm going to bring all of you to Du Bois bathroom. You have your bath in there, then I'll see how you are going to come out. Mm -hmm. It will come oh, with a private jet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 